Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Hey you guys, I'm Christy Titus and we're out here hunting using OnX Hunt to help locate access points and roads to take our side by side. The goal is to find those spots where we can get farther away from pickup traffic, stay on approved roadway systems, cover more miles, do more glassing, and have a better opportunity at finding the animal of a lifetime. You guys, if you're not using Onyx to help you locate approved roads, you should start today. And if you're new to Onyx, use code WILD20 at checkout for your elite membership to save 20%, code WILD20. Hey everybody, thank you for joining me for this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. We are coming at you from the NSSF SHOT Show, and we're in my hotel room in the Venetian, and actually Palazzo, kind of the same thing. Same thing. Uh, I'm here with my good friend Jules McQueen, who's now the president of Carbon TV, Mm -hmm. and you've had like such a super long journey that's taken you into where you're at right now, which... You're like a powerhouse in for women and somebody that I totally look up to and am inspired by all the time. I love that you say that, but we kind of grew up together yeah. <laughs> in a way. Like, and I say grow up, we didn't like grow up together, but I mean, we've known each other for what seems like 20 years. Forever. It's yeah. been a long time. Yeah. And you know, when we both kind of got started in the in the industry, yeah. who knew what we were going to end up doing? It was Nobody. such a different time back then. Yeah. And it's fun now to kind of glance back and go oh my gosh look at all the fun things we've done yeah well you're like an ultra professional tv host I mean you've been hosting tv for how long now so I I oh gosh I want to say 15 years yeah yeah um you know, and it's, um, I would I won't say that I would be proud of all the things I've hosted. Like some, of, sometimes you look back at some of the old content, some of the old episodes and you're like, whoa, people actually like, went did anybody that. watch this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like what was, what was I doing? But, but you know, it worked at the time yeah. and we evolved. That's the fun thing about being a human as you just kind of grow and evolve and yeah. hope that people stick with you through those times. Um, but I'm proud of my story and yeah. kind of where it started and where it's going. And, um, I, I did a lot of hosting like on air, you know, um, TV show hosting. I also owned a production company for a lot of years. Most people know that. And now I'm corporate. So I, you know, I'm kind of like running a major company in the industry and it's just a fun transition. Yeah. Yeah, one thing leads to the next, and you hope you learn something along the way. But you're still hosting TV. I mean, I don't, do. <laughs> don't don't sell yourself short. You still have Outdoor Weekly. You're I still do. hosting. So yeah. not only are you like in this corporate model, but um, yeah, yeah, you're you're doing it all. Yeah. How did you get into hunting? You were you an adult onset hunter? Yeah, I was. So um, I'm not from a hunting family. Yeah. Um, and now though, my parents are being introduced to hunting, which is really fun for me. Yes. Um. So. so are you introducing your parents to hunting? Um, not really. I've only hunted with my dad one time in my life. Uh-huh. My mom, I've never hunted with. Um, but they're um, with their spouses and their lives now beginning to hunt, which yeah. is really cool. Um, but no, I grew up in a family that was not a hunting family. We camped, yeah. but that was about it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, when I was around 17, 18, I decided this is something I wanted to do. And I moved, I graduated high school early. I moved from Oklahoma to Missouri and there was a Barnes and Noble bookstore, um, in Springfield, Missouri. And I would go there and just read magazines and books and try to understand the hunting thing. Um, but when you're not from, um, a hunting family, if it's not introduced to you at a young age, first of all, I didn't know there were different types of deer. No one told me what an elk was or where they lived. And I didn't understand the entire concept of hunting, right? So the reasons why or how or what to do or who to even talk to. 
So as an adult, 20 years later, it's part of my passion in life to make sure kids have that access to the mm-hmm. information. Um, Barnes and Noble, sure, they had some good magazines and books and stuff, but it didn't really teach me enough. It was a lot of trial and error, doing things wrong. Um, but I got into the industry in my early 20s and never, never stopped. So what was your first hunting trip? My very first hunt, I borrowed a rifle. Well, I went to my hunter education course mm-hmm. um, in Missouri. Um, I borrowed a rifle. It was a 7 mag. And I asked permission on some property locally. And they were like, you can shoot any deer that comes by. Here is where you go. And they kind of like helped me understand how to get to it down this ridge. And I didn't even know tree stands were a thing. Thank goodness, because I had a (laughs) rifle. (laughs) So you don't want that to be your first experience. So um, I wedged myself between two trees and I sat on this ridge and it was kind of looking down. And I shot the first deer that walked by. And to this day, it's the oldest whitetail I've ever shot. He was so old and just massive and beautiful. But of all the things I had read and tried to understand, no one told me how big they would be. And I assumed I could take care of it myself as a beginner. I thought maybe I could drag it or lift it. And you're a tiny human. So. I'm not that large. So yeah. <laughs> I'm not that strong, especially in my, you know, at that age in my life. Um, so I had to call for backup. And mm-hmm. I didn't know, I, I knew nothing about after the process of the harvest. Mm-hmm. So it was one thing that came to my attention was a lot of these you know, articles and, you know, the information we have access to. They talk about the hunt, but not afterwards. Yeah. They don't talk about what to do, you know, after you walk up to it. Mm -hmm. How does a beginner understand how to, you know, field dress an animal or you can't lift it, you know, (laughs) like, so you have to have, you have to have some help on that. So I've been really pleased over the past 20 years to see that information coming out where there's how to videos and, you know, deeper articles on... And broader conversations that make you feel welcome because I think it's really important. There's a lot of people like yourself that, you know, are young women or young men when they start hunting. But there's also, I'm seeing a huge influx of new hunters that are um, empty nesters. Yeah. So women and men that their kids have now bloomed and blossomed and they're at college or they're somewhere else and the house is a lot quieter and um, there's not as much to fill your time with running kids and doing things so there's there's a lot of women that are getting into hunting and shooting sports now that that are that are middle-aged you know and and there's so many resources out there now Mm -hmm. Um, and it's in that but I still think it's very intimidating with with as much as we've come we still have a long ways to go yeah it it reminds me of um I've never actually publicly like said anything about it but you're like a few quite a few years ago um I realized that there were no good gun cleaning videos on YouTube yeah. for beginners and women and there's I don't know how many a few three four that I I self-filmed in my kitchen <laughs> and just got some of my favorite guns and and I remember I, when you did do you remember this yes, and I, I, I edited do. them myself I was mm-hmm. very proud of myself because I learned how to edit for these videos and I would stand in my kitchen and say even if you're a person who has no experience, if yeah. you take this gun apart, you can't really mess it up. It's like a puzzle and you should have access to video content that shows you how to put it back together. Just wipe it down. Here's what I'm using. You know, there's so much good, um, you know, like materials out there for you to just kind of wipe it down and understand the mechanisms yeah. of your guns. And, um, so I started doing that and I haven't actually, I don't know if I would ever go rewatch them, but they're still out there somewhere. Yeah. But my whole purpose for that was make beginners feel comfortable. Yeah. Give them that power to, if you're going to go take your shotgun and, and go even just, you know, as a hobby and maybe go duck hunting or something, make them feel comfortable taking it apart and understanding how it works. It's one thing I really appreciate about you is you have such a servant's heart. And so much of what you've done with your career, um, with your hunting journey, isn't necessarily about the harvest or the hunt, or um, but but it's really about serving other people and their experiences, mm-hmm. and then just being able to be out and enjoy being in wild places with wildlife. And I mean, let's just all be honest: we're in a convention, which I'm super glad to be around all my friends and doing this, but. There is nothing better than being on the mountain yeah. and the only clock that you can watch is 
um, you know, the one that when the sun rises and sets is the one that matters, you know. Um, But you have done so much that's just beyond let's take this harvest. Let's do this. I mean, hunting is very spiritual and meaningful to you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. I, I, through the years have always said I never built my career on shooting big animals. It's not what I did. You know, I, I am actually a passionate outdoors woman, but I'm passionate about having fun Yeah. too. Like that's kind of my passion in life is, um, allowing people to live vicariously through the stories we tell, Mm -hmm. you know, that would be my elevator pitch. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, I've been so blessed, you know, I've done a lot of great TV shows over the years that have allowed me to, um, share that platform with people who would have never had those opportunities. And, you know, thank goodness I was in the right place at the right time and knowing the right people. And, you know, and I do have a servant's heart. I do. I know that about Mm -hmm. myself. And that's why every day when I wake up, it's, I can't believe I have this opportunity. This is what I get to do every day. Mm-hmm. And, um, not you know, have to do, I get, get to, to do. do, I get to do. And there's a big difference when yeah. you're like, Oh my gosh, I have to do this today. I have yeah. to do that today. Yeah. When you just change your vocabulary from have mm-hmm. to get, yeah. um, it changes the whole meaning of your day. I it think. Does. Absolutely. I wake up so grateful every single day. I know what it's like to struggle and to really have to work hard. This is not handed over. You know, this is not something that you walk in and they're like, oh, you're a girl. Come run my company. Come do this, (laughs) you know. Like you have to really take those stepping stones and find the opportunities and self-educate. You know, I'm a a huge advocate for self-education. And, you know, for me, um, my belief is I will support Every person, as long as they are trying to become better and really in it for the right reasons, good intentions go a Mm -hmm. long way for me. Absolutely. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a really fun journey. So you, you hosted, you've hosted television. Your last television show that you were hosting really was about other people and you Mm -hmm. hosted a lot of veterans on your television show. Yeah. Um, so for, you have to remind me the backcountry back. Um, it was uh, Brotherhood Outdoors. Brotherhood Outdoors. Yeah. So your television yep. show, Brotherhood Outdoors, really was a focus not about you, right? But about yeah. a brotherhood that you were creating in the outdoors yeah. and inviting people in. Yeah. So um, this is going back to around 2014, mm-hmm. I think. Um, we had been doing, and we Dan- Daniel and I had been doing a show before that um, for Sportsman Channel. Um, we had the opportunity to take on Brotherhood Outdoors, which is already in existence. We mm-hmm. were contracted to produce and host it, and we were taking. Um, it, it, was, it was my favorite part about this show. Everyone got to see the public side of it, mm-hmm. what aired on the network, but I got to see the applications that came in for people to be on the show. Yes. And it was one of the greatest times of my life because I got to read stories from people who were living with purpose mm-hmm. or giving back to their community or doing something great for other people. And I still remember the names of the people I was choosing as the, you know, the production person for this show and saying, okay, here's eight or 10 people for this season. And they are all so deserving. Mm-hmm. And then I would line them up with a hunt that I felt that they would love. Mm-hmm. And we would take them on their hunt of a lifetime, all expense paid. And we would get to go document that and yeah. be a part of it. And, and it wasn't me pulling the trigger. It was yeah. me behind the camera mm-hmm. and line producing, executive producing, directing, you know, we, like we did all of it. And then we would get to see this person having the greatest moment of their life. And it was just beautiful. It is beautiful. Yeah. I, I, um, uh, one thing that I've found with the mountain, and uh, you've experienced this, I've experienced it, you don't get out there and you just harvest an animal. You get out there and you realize what you're capable of yeah. um, and what you can endure to be successful or, or the beauty that you get to intake. Um, and, and you know, obviously we are not um, – We don't inherit this land from our ancestors. We borrow it from our children. And you and I don't have children. Right. However, we both, I think, really strongly believe that we have to leave this place better than what we found it. Right. And I believe that as a tribe, everyone's children are ours in a way. Right. So even as a woman who doesn't have any human children, you know, I just, you know, I feel that pull Mm -hmm. to guard what we're doing in that way for other people's children and, you know, by, you know, donating my time or resources or 
finding a way to allow people to have a voice, Mm -hmm. right? And so I think, you know, even if it doesn't sound like you're making a really big difference in life, sometimes you are without knowing it. So what are some of your favorite, like most profound moments? Do you have one in particular that stands out in your mind of... Like career-wise or Whatever. in the outdoors? Yeah, or go both. Either. Yeah. Both. Okay, career-wise. And since this is a good one, since we're, we're at SHOT Show filming yeah. this right now, it, you know, technically starts tomorrow for me. Um, a couple years ago, here, two years ago, at SHOT Show. So I've been the president of Carbon TV for a few years, three, three and a half years. And um, when I took over operations on the company, you know, it was a very different company from what it is right now. It had just become a standalone OTT network. It, there had been an acquisition. It was pulled out. You know, I took over at that point and it was the biggest challenge of my life. Yeah. Well, then um, I worked really hard to secure relationships, to fix a lot of things, to you know, look at the vision of the network, you know, and really, you know, wrap my head around that. Well, two years ago here at SHOT Show, one of the most profound moments of my career was um, I was in my hotel room um, the first day of SHOT Show and I turned on my TV. And for anyone who's been here during SHOT, you know that if you turn on your TV in a a hotel that is supported by SHOT, they have SHOT TV, SHOT, SHOT TV. And at the bottom corner, it said, powered by Carbon TV. Ugh. And I just g- stared at it, and I went, I did that. Yeah. <laughs> I used my resources and my um, connections and my knowledge, right? So without having to um, <clears throat> change course in a lot of ways, I really just connected dots. Mm-hmm. And for me, connecting dots in life is a, is a big thing. Mm-hmm. And we became the official video streaming partner of SHOT Show that year. And it was this beautiful moment where not a lot of people probably noticed it, but I did. Mm -hmm. And it made me walk a little bit taller. Mm -hmm. And I felt a little more proud. And I felt like, oh, all of this work for so many long days. And that wasn't, that's not how I make money. No. That was me personally feeling like I set a goal I accomplished the goal and it set the standard for what I'm going to move towards in the future. And now we're the video streaming partner for a lot of the trade shows and for a lot of the conventions. And, um, and it's not even really how we monetize the business, but for me being connected to people in this industry and like, um, setting a standard for quality and making sure that people know that our company is doing really great things. Well, and I, I just joined the Carbon TV family and i um, so thankful for that. And I mean, there's so much going on. I'm, I'm um, really torn with a lot of things that are happening in the world right now. And I think a lot of us are. And we all have a very varying of, of opinions with things. And I believe fundamentally in a few things. The power of the purse. Mm-hmm. You spend your money where your mouth is. Um which is, you know, one of the reasons why I'm moving out of Oregon and I'm moving to Wyoming, which yeah. is a very free state constitutional carry, great hunting, not a lot of people. Um, and really, you know, the governor supports hunting. He was at our women's hunting camp every day this last year that we had a, we hosted the Wyoming women's antelope hunt. So I believe in the power of the purse. I believe in the power of, you know, where you spend your tax dollars, how you do things. But I also believe in the power of your network. Mm -hmm. And I have, you know, my series has been fueled, if you will, by YouTube and Facebook and Instagram platforms. And, you know, I've tried other platforms to diversify with Rumble. Um, Didn't see a big subscribership. Didn't have a lot of people there. And I'm, and I'm, over those last 12 months, I'm looking at my platform and I'm being deplatformed every day. Mm I'm literally losing followers on Facebook, um, and I could not explain to you guys why I couldn't get a new follower in <laughs> 2021. Like, how does that even happen where I lose, have a net loss of followers in 12 months, and mm-hmm. it's zero growth. Um, they don't allow me to utilize or boost my content because I have grip and grins, and I have kill shots, and um, I'm completely censored Mm -hmm. you know my videos are suppressed everything I do everything that I'm trying to build as far as educational outreach with tips and tactics and my episodes for being hopefully inspiring to people and connecting them with the outdoors um, everything I'm doing is just like shut down shut down shut down 
And I'm like, look, Christy, <laughs> talking to myself in the third person, <laughs> um, like, I really, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? I believe my money is where my mouth is. My boots need to be walking what my brain is thinking. And I'm not doing that with my network. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I reached out to you and I'm like, look, I'm ready for a change. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to be a part of a network family that believes fundamentally in what I'm doing, supports me. And um, you and Jana, or Jana actually coined the phrase, um, don't be or don't surround yourself with people or companies that tolerate you. Actually, I did. It's called, you did it. It, I say, go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. That's right. Yeah, it's what I say. Yeah. I, I, almost everything I ever do, it's go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. And I, think, I yeah. And that's but so it's true. Everyone, I'm, we should all say it every day. Yes. It's something we should all say. And yes. that's personal, business, ev like across the board. Everything. If people are celebrating you, stay with that. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why I'm moving yeah. states to celebrate right. people. I want to be around people that right. celebrate our lifestyle. Yeah. That's why I joined the Carbon TV family. Yeah. And um, it's very meaningful for me to be a part of that. And, and I'm hoping, you know, if if I have a listener or a viewer that's watching me on Facebook or watching me on YouTube, because I still have those platforms, I really encourage you guys, get off them and join me on Carbon. Yeah. And, you know, the it's a beautiful thing because, I mean, we've been friends for so long. And I might have actually reached out to you trying to get you over on Carbon. I don't, I don't remember. I don't know. I'm not sure what <laughs> it's happened. All a blur. It's a blur. But I, you know, the whole celebrated, tolerated thing, we don't even, I, you know, my whole stance on that is keep doing everything you're doing. If you're reaching people on Facebook or YouTube, um, most of the content that we that we have, we don't even require it's exclusive. Mm -hmm. So you can still do all of that because even if you have one person who loves to watch you on Facebook, let them keep watching it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But we will also put you out in front of our entire audience yeah. at Carbon and hopefully they come over. But if not, that's okay too. Because I the want more you guys to come over. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Because the more popular you become, the yeah. better it is for me. And yeah. I, I love lifting up my people and empowering and kind of setting you up for success in mm -hmm. those ways. And, you know, that's why, you know, when we were saying earlier, I get to do this every day. Mm -hmm. I get to do this every day. It is so yeah. wonderful to be able to um, provide a platform for people to tell their stories that change the world. And that's what I, that's how I would put my job description. Yeah. You know, I, I get to be at the head of a company that is allowing people to be storytellers mm -hmm. every single day. And I mean, is there anything better than no. doing what you love? No, there's just, nothing better. There's wonderful. nothing more rewarding. Yeah. And, and um, being where you're celebrated is, man, I, um, I, I think a lot of our listeners can say that we're all tired of censorship being the bad guys yeah, you know, for, the, for, yeah. for what we believe in yeah censorship is a conversation that I have daily you yeah. know and and from it's been good for my business you know so that you know is my silver lining at least you know all of the censorship that people are experiencing you know whether it's shadow banning or blacklisting mm -hmm. whatever it is I get phone calls and you know it's it, for me it's never like yes, you're being hurt, you know, yes. but it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. what can I do to open this door to help you? How mm -hmm. can I, how can we be a part of what you're doing mm -hmm. to kind of like extend that olive branch? Right. And it doesn't mean they even have to change anything. Just let us be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And hopefully in this industry, you know, the shooting sports and the outdoors and all of the things that we love, hopefully the company that I'm running has um, a way to open those doors for the future generations, mm -hmm. right? With, um, you know, freedom of speech and yeah. non-censorship and allowing people to have this way to tell their stories. Um, so for me, I mean, that's just, there's nothing better in the world than having that legacy. No, and that's what you're doing is you're helping, you're helping our voice stay strong and um, helping us have a voice. You know, I, I just can't believe, I am I feel very fortunate, even with all the censorship, censorship that I've experienced this year you know my series experienced 36 percent growth this year yeah. in viewership a lot of that is is or in part of it you know to carbon to, and I've only been on the carbon family since October and I don't even have all my seasons I have seasons two through five on there right now yeah. I still have to put season one on um <sighs> When I get time, <laughs> but I also have my wild and uncut podcast that's airing there. And, um, yeah. it's, 
again, it's just such a great experience for me to be part of that and, you know, to watch where, you know, where we kind of all connected. I remember one of the first projects we did together was for Carbon TV. It was. It was the Women Who. Women Who. Yeah. That's right. Women Who Hunt. Yes. We did a, and we, I wasn't even working at the company no, back then. No. no. We were all doing so many other things. Yes. And um, I had aired... I think I had aired one of my shows on Carbon prior to that, you know, jump ship from a network, went over to Carbon, did great. And then they they produced as an original series, Women Who. And mm-hmm. it wasn't just Women Who Hunt, no. which is what we did with Jana. Um, they had Women Who Shoot, Women Who, you know, and they had, I think, four Farm of them. and Ranch yeah. or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And so we actually, I remember when they wanted to set it up. Um, they contacted me and said, hey, we're doing this women who thing. And I said, oh, my gosh, can I call my two girlfriends? Because <laughs> what is better than a trifecta yeah. of stories? And we all met up out in Montana. At Jana's house. At Jana's house. Oh, it was so fun. So much fun. And can you believe that's been like five years ago? It's unreal. And they were like snake charming like oh we yeah, the went, rubber boas we were um, in the, on the yeah, mountain roads we yeah. were filming and yeah. Gina's like oh there's a snake <laughs> la, la, la. and her and Jules are like picking it up and like petting the snake and talking about how docile they are and and I'm over here like GTFO I'm yeah. not touching that thing okay somewhere <laughs> like, somewhere no. very deep in my iPhone I still have all of the oh. videos of you in the background screaming and Jana holding the snake and you know and I mean what a wonderful experience. Yeah. We were out filming our stories it was fun. back before. I mean, gosh, doesn't it seem like so long ago? So long ago. Yeah. And I think that's the same trip that we went bow fishing, isn't it? No, it's not. Was, was it a different, different trip? trip? Yeah. It was a different trip. Yeah. That was my first time bow fishing was with you girls. That's right. Yeah. That was so, so much, much fun. I think fun. I got a hook in my finger. You did. Oh, my gosh. I told it. that story yesterday. <laughs> um she literally, in no fault to you, and it's not like you're a bad angler or anything. Right. Sometimes. It was like a rocking boat, and sh- you were doing something with your I rigging, to, and then the boat, yeah, the boat like rolled over. I went to grab something, and the it was a um, it was a hook with a. This is how good of a fisherman I am. What is it when barbed I hook. A, a barbed hook? A barbed hook. Thank you. Yes. Yes, you win. So a barbed hook, and it went through my middle finger up into the fingernail. Remember yeah, like, that. All the way. All the way in. And I just And she did of, not cry. I just want to put that out there. I cried on the inside you, deeply. I would have been. I was dying on crying the Crying audibly. Okay. <laughs> I was just very happy someone, doc- you documented it. Yeah. Remember, you filmed oh, the whole so thing. Gross. And they, they just, they pulled it right out. And, you know, we, we kept fishing. Yeah. But, you know, what great memories. <laughs> I don't know how oh. anybody could do that and not scream. It's like terrible. You have your pain threshold. Terrible. Like no. you, you, you I'm were just, saying earlier, you're not tough or something or I strong. And I'm like, wait a second. Anybody that gets a fish hook through their finger and they don't <laughs> scream on the removal of a barbed hook, they're tough. Period. Okay. I somebody. Yeah. I mean, really, like, it's my pride that gets in the way. <laughs> it's just me trying to be a tough guy all yeah. the time on the outside, but on the inside, I'm usually I'm crying. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. A tool of history and a symbol of the Old West, the Marlin Lever Action Rifle is the classic American long gun. Annie Oakley trusted the Model 1891 above all others to demonstrate her legendary marksmanship and today her iconic shooting prowess can still be harnessed every time you pick up a Marlin lever action rifle. Marlin rifles now ride under the Ruger brand, and with that, you can expect the same time-honored features of the traditional Marlin rifle, hardened by Ruger's own special mark of exacting standards and legendary innovation. Ride for the brands that you are proud of, Ruger and Marlin. You're living in the big city, and with that, this past April, you experienced something that I can't even fathom, like, honestly living through um, and dealing with. Explain to everybody what happened to you in Detroit. Yeah, so my office is just outside of Detroit, Michigan, and... Um, like you, I've been in the firearms, the, you know, I've, I've always, I have my CCW in four States, you know I mean? I just, I, that's part of my world. 
Um, so yeah, in, back in April, I, I had been at a girlfriend's house downtown, down in Midtown, um, outside of Detroit, uh, which is a nice part of town. Yeah. Um, um, I had been there on a Sunday to have dinner with her and her husband. And I went back on a Wednesday right after that to have dinner again with her and her husband. And, um, what we believe happened, which seems right, was when I was there on Sunday. So I have a very nice vehicle. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I work hard. I have a beautiful vehicle. And I parked it, um, street parking, you know, just a block down um, on a main street. Um, and um, it was parked in the same place three nights apart. So what we believe happened was um, some people saw my vehicle parked there and then they saw it there three nights later. Mm -hmm. And when I left her house on that Wednesday night, um, there were four men waiting for me when I exited her house and walked down the sidewalk. And I had my dog, Banjo, with me. He's a large dog. He's not really that aggressive, though. He's, he's older. The sweetest he's the thing. sweetest. He's a sweet dog. He's the he's best not dog. not a guard dog. No, he's not a protection dog. He's just my... He's your buddy. He's my little soulmate, yeah. you know, for 11 years. So um, Banjo and I were walking out. I didn't have my phone or anything in my hand. I had it in my back pocket. I had a crossbody bag. And, um, so when I got close to this main road where my Jeep was parked, um, one, one man crossed my path to slow me down. Um, another man crossed my path as I crossed the street. And then as I got to the other side of third street where this happened, um, another man walked out, he took a step, um, he had a hoodie on. Um, and it was dark and he, I watched him as he, um, lifted his hoodie and pulled a pistol from his waistband and put it on my forehead and stop right now. Were you alarmed by the other men? Did you not at all think it was an unusual? Not at all. No. Okay. And so I this was totally took you by surprise. I was fully aware, not on my phone, not texting, which is what I'm telling people now. Thank goodness. I was able to describe them to mm -hmm. police. I know exactly what was happening in yeah. front of me. I was fully aware. But when this man stepped out from the shadows, they had a driver sitting right behind him, you know, in the, in the, he had stepped out of the vehicle as I approached, walked up, pulled the pistol, put it on my head. Um, I took off my crossbody purse. I tossed it to him. He was from about me to you, maybe a little closer within arm's reach. And um, full panic sets in at that point. It's just full fight or flight. Yeah. And I was trying to fly. <laughs> I yeah. wanted to fly. Um, so I tried to um, pull Banjo backwards and get across the street. I tossed him my purse. I started screaming. What did he say to you when he pulled, pulled the gun on you? He said, give me your purse. Okay. And I did. <laughs> gladly. Yeah. Um, but I had Banjo's leash in my left hand. Um, what happened was they, he took my bag. Um, he went to the car, opened it. My keys were not in the bag. My car keys were not in there. And it's a, it's just a little tiny bag. You yeah. can see immediately what's in there. Um, I didn't realize I had my car keys in my left hand with Banjo's leash because I was walking. I was three cars mm -hmm. down from the vehicle. So I start backing up. There are vehicles going down the street and wouldn't stop to help me. I was screaming my head off. Thought I got away. I thought, okay, you know, I'm going to get back to my girlfriend's house, three houses down. And um, I got to the sidewalk across the street and um, Banjo was panicking, not knowing what's going on. I pulled too hard. He, his collar came over his head. So now I've got my dog without a leash. I turn and the gunman was running towards me with the gun drawn, um, pointed at me. And he was screaming, give me your keys. I won't say the bad words. He was, yeah, saying, he, he, he was yeah. screaming, give me your keys. Um, he caught my dog and um, he put the gun on Banjo's head. And I was about five or six feet away screaming. I don't even, I've never screamed so much in my life, um, screaming as much as I could to try to get attention. And he held the gun on Banjo's head and said, give me your keys. I thought he had my keys. I didn't know he didn't have my keys. Um, but when Banjo had pulled out of his collar, I had dropped the leash to run and the keys were with it on the mm -hmm. sidewalk. He was standing right by my keys and didn't see him. Um, 
when I kept screaming, he took the gun away from Banjo and came towards me. And I turned, I had flip flops on and I tripped um, and fell face first on the sidewalk, just right on my head. And he walked up and put the gun on the back of my head and started screaming at me to give him my keys. And um, I thought he had them. So I was in full panic mode over 20 different things you never want to experience. Um, All I could think was I still have my phone. So I took my phone out of my back pocket and I flicked it in the grass. And when he went to bend over to pick up my phone, I grabbed Banjo by the neck and just ran. Mm -hmm. screaming still. And by the time I got three houses down, three people on that street had called the police already from the noise. And um, they, I mean, you know, they got my purse, they got my wallet. They did steal my identity a few months later. So I've had to shut all that down, you know, over the past year. But they they didn't get the vehicle, but it was a carjacking gone wrong is what it was. And it was very close to being really, really bad. Um, You know, I... (sighs) The reason I say, so I was at her house that three days before I was armed Mm -hmm. the Sunday that I was there. I had not been at work that day. I had my pistol with me. Um, When I went back on Wednesday, I had left from my office. I went to her house directly from work and I did not have my sidearm. Thank goodness, because um, that could have ended poorly. There was nothing I could have done. Mm -hmm. Even if I had it on my person, I don't know that I could have, they were, there were four men waiting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not a lot you can do. Yeah, because bad, guy like, bad guys like to travel in packs. Yeah. They hunt like a team. Four of them yeah. waiting right there. And I mean, they knew exactly what they were doing. Mm-hmm. And if, even if I had my sidearm, now I will say my recovery process after that, I am very grateful and thankful to have my concealed weapons from it because I wasn't able to leave for about a month to go do anything by myself. I couldn't go to the grocery store. I couldn't go in public. I still have a very difficult time, but where I'm allowed to, if I'm carrying, I do feel safer. I do feel feel more secure. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that even as a, um, you know, as a form of therapy and to get your strength back and to kind of feel that, that empowerment again, um, you know, it, it would be really hard for me to go to the grocery store if I didn't have a sidearm mm-hmm. at this point. You know, I just, everyone looks bad to me. You know, I, I think I'll always be on high alert, but, um, and that's d- what, I mean, what kind of like, you know, you went through this, obviously they didn't find her car keys. She still drives her car. Yep. They know where you live. They know where I live. They, they have every single piece of information. Even my social security card was in my purse. Yeah. So, I mean, they took taxes out. They bought a house. I mean, you know, I wait, mean, they bought a house with your identity. Oh yeah. They tried, they did like, it was bad. I have LifeLock. So I was just constantly, <laughs> God. Yeah. I had so many alerts. We had to shut everything down on my entire credit for uh, quite a while. And so it's how still shut down. how do you even do that? LifeLock, I, I literally just, I, I had to fill out forms, like paper, yeah. <laughs> mail them in and shut everything down. So even if I wanted to go buy a car right now, I couldn't, I shut all my credit down Yeah, because they wouldn't stop. Mm -hmm. But this wasn't even like the worst part. That was just, those guys just sold my wallet to some guy down the street is what happened. And it had a lot of information in it. Yeah. And I've worked really hard to get what I have in life. I come from nothing. Yeah. And now these people think that they can just come take my purse and. You and know, your identity and, and your life and your credit. And yeah. And put my life in their hands. That's not okay. My dog's life. That's mm-hmm. not okay. Mm-hmm. So by far one of the most traumatic experiences, but everything is more beautiful afterwards. Yeah. You know, the next day when I woke up and everything tastes better, my friends are more dear to me. Mm-hmm. I'm so much more grateful to be alive than ever. And I know that sounds so I wasn't shot like some people are like I, I survived it without injury, but there's something about some man holding my life in his hands. I'm not okay with. No, it's not cool. Absolutely not. Yeah. What advice do you have for the audience? You know, some things obviously that sound like really helped number one, save your life, but these guys were caught, correct? We know who they are. Yeah. They couldn't. Yeah. You know who they are. Judicial system's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Well, they know who they are, but uh, epic fail. Um, Thank you, Michigan. Mm -hmm. Um, So 
big takeaway for me is, you know, I think we talk about being situationally aware, but really, you know, trusting your instincts mm-hmm. is, is number one. If you feel like you're walking into a situation that feels bad, don't do don't it. Don't do it. So I, it's happened. Um, I'm not going to say, <laughs> I don't want it to sound like I've had this major traumatic life, but things happen. You know, I'm turning 40 this year and at this point in life, traveling as much as I do alone, things happen Yeah, right here in this hotel. Don't get on an elevator with a person if it's just you and them, if you don't feel comfortable, yeah. right? I mean, those things happen. It's happened twice yeah. in this city to me personally. Like yeah. over the years, you just learn to trust your gut instinct yeah. and your intuition. And the advice that I would give is put your phone away yeah. and pay attention. I was able to give a very accurate description of every single thing that happened. I was not texting. I was not looking at my phone. I had it in my pocket. I was walking. I could, I described every single thing, including the car, everything to police. And I think that that gives me some peace of mind. I can't blame myself at that point. Yeah. I know you I did, did everything, everything you in my could. power. Yeah. Um, but also scream your head off. <laughs> like that is the more than having a firearm, more than having some, if someone had been there with me, who knows what would have happened? Yeah. I don't know if my dog would have barked, he might've been hurt. I don't know. But all I know is me screaming and I'm not a loud person. No. I'm a pretty quiet person. But me screaming might have saved my life. Yeah. They did not want to be on that street for longer than they had to be. With a screaming woman. With a screaming woman. Mm-hmm. A d- absolutely insane. I don't mm-hmm. even know what I was saying. Yeah. It was like a different but language. But you were, you, were, you were vocalizing. And I think yeah. everything that, I mean, I've never been in this situation. Everything I've learned or heard is be loud and never stop fighting. Yeah. Um, scream. You know, if they want your purse, give them their purse. You'll get more stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but do everything you can to just stay yeah. alive. Don't let them kidnap you. I mean, right. heaven forbid you get kidnapped. I mean, yeah. that's... I made the decision to stay for my dog. And yeah. I know that some people would not make the same decision. I would make it over and over. Like I, anyone who knows me and my dog, he's been my saving grace for the past decade. I would never abandon him with a gun to his head. I, stu- I stood there and waited and screamed looking at the guy. Some people would choose to... Run. run and that's fine too i think that's a great defense mechanism i personally chose in the to heat stay. of the moment you that was the decision i chose you to made. stay um i ended up you know with my face down you know and it, it wasn't a great situation but i wouldn't change it i continued to scream the whole time there were homes on that street that did have external video cameras you know because they were like vrbo homes and yeah. they did catch it on camera you know and the whole thing is very um you know, when you say it out loud, it's not great, Mm -hmm. you know, and it does make you have anxiety, but I just have to put a little faith in like lightning doesn't strike twice. So maybe it will never happen again. But for people who are for women or men, anyone, anyone, not even just women pay attention to everything that's going on. Always watch your surroundings. Mm -hmm. It's like the, it's the most important part of walking down the street these days. Paying it get your head out of your phone yeah look up look out and right. then I think a lot of times too um when you walk with determination and purpose mm-hmm. it's it's a, a built-in deterrent why would somebody want to victimize somebody who's paying attention yours was a um premeditated yeah um they were looking specifically for your vehicle but it, it, if somebody's just looking to steal someone's purse or rob someone, it's much easier to do that for somebody that's a little complacent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they, I would have given a them a softer my, target, if you I will. W- I would have handed over my keys gladly if yeah. he had just asked for them. Yeah. I, in that moment, if he was smart in any way, I would have gladly given him all of my belongings peacefully and yeah. walked away and never even, it would have been so simple. But, you know, because there's this, you know, um, you know, like this, it's just like a power thing for yeah. some people out there and they want to take by force. So, yeah, but it was, it was traumatic, but I do, I do believe that paying attention can save yeah. your life. I do believe that. And hopefully the people that are listening to this podcast can hear your story and, um, really take stock of, of yeah. how they're in public, how, yeah. they, how they interact with people in public and yeah. decisions they make 
at you know and there's there are places where bad guys tend to want to be you know if you pull into a gas station and you have a bad feeling about the guy next to you that's pumping gas don't get out of your car till he's gone you right. know or go to another gas station yeah whatever whatever it is just take that and yeah. and make a different choice and also don't be afraid to look weird i am so okay with looking strange these yeah. days I refuse to get on an elevator with one other person. Yeah. I don't do it. Yeah. I don't. I've had bad experiences. I will wait for the next one because yeah. 30 seconds is not that long for, no, me, it's for not. me to feel comfortable. And I was listening to another thing um, the other day is um, we, we did a defensive pistol class. And one of the instructors was like, scream, put your hands up and say, stop right there. And scream at someone if right. they are making you uncomfortable. Yeah. And if if they are like an innocent, they're going to be like, ah, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And you are going to look like an absolute nutbag. Yeah. Who cares? Who cares? But if there's somebody that is nefarious, has ill intent, mm-hmm. you know, it might derail them enough to... To pick a different target. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Prevent you from having that situation. Yeah. Becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. So just making a scene if you feel like something isn't right. I, I think that a lot of people, you know, they just, um, they're concerned that they're going to look like the crazy, be the crazy person. Yeah. Absolutely. So after yeah. all of this city life, you're probably always ready to just get back out in the woods and. Yeah. I, I've become a more. More um, zen Mm, yeah connection to the earth (laughs) yeah yeah I mean thank goodness you know I I have um coping mechanisms right so I've been gifted with you know having good ways of you know coping with trauma getting through things um, breathing through it um some people go through a traumatic event in life and they don't have those coping mechanisms they're not able to cope they don't know what steps to take maybe they don't have access to therapy therapy helped me a lot i had to go a lot after all of that including other things in my life traumatic events and you know moving through it and becoming a healthier bigger better person afterwards is the most beautiful feeling Mm -hmm. everything like i said everything is just better after you've gone through something and you have a full appreciation for good people or for good situations or, you know, for being healthy. Um, I don't particularly like being in big cities now or around large groups of people. Um, you know, but it is part of the deal and you just have to kind of, you know, work through it, work through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But thank goodness I have good ways of coping. I meditate every day. I surround myself with good people. Carbon TV has meditations now. We do. So so we started a second site of the company a while back. I founded, um, Carbon Unwind and it's a sleep and meditation app, which is kind of like a fun project. Uh, a necessary project for me and my team when COVID happened, um, we're a media company. And so who knew what was going to happen, you know, with COVID, everyone had to go home and I didn't get to see my team. Um, We had to go dark for a little while on media. So um, we instantly started Unwind and I transferred every single person who works for me over to this other company. Um, Didn't have to let go of anyone everyone still had something great to to be working on um so yeah we started a sleep and meditation app Mm -hmm. and i write a lot of the meditations which is really fun it's good therapy for me Mm -hmm. um yeah it's a so if you guys are looking for (laughs) an outlet to put yourself in a better place or just a different mental state yeah um check out the app yeah unwind it's free to download um And it's, you know, I believe in meditation. Mm -hmm. I believe in taking deep breaths, even if, you know, it's just for a few seconds a day, Mm -hmm. you know, just kind of that um, uh, being present. Mm -hmm. I think it helps a lot of things in life. So, yeah. Present, thankful, grateful. Gratitude is everything. Gratitude. Everything. Yep. Practicing gratitude. Um, you know, I am, I've never been more grateful yeah. for everything in my life and not just that event that happened in April, but just, you know, um, watching my friends succeed yeah. or, you know, watching, you know, my life kind of blossom into this beautiful thing over the years and, um, just all of the, yeah. all of the wonderful, beautiful things. If you're not taking time every day to truly have gratitude for it, why are you doing it? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of people that did that 75 hard program. And, yeah. and a lot of that was taking and making a commitment 
for 75 days to be completely dedicated to yourself. Right. And um, I haven't done the 75 hard. I'm considering doing it um, after show season. Right. <laughs> um, just to take that and kind of re- reboot your dedication. Now, Wilderness Athlete just launched a um, rugged routines deal where, you know, it's just getting people back into a routine of how do you take care of yourself um, and self-care and self-love. You know, everybody talks about that. And I'm like, you know, what about just hating your life the way it is enough to where you're willing to make a change? Right. I mean, we all, I mean, I think most people kind of love themselves to some degree, but why not just hate that you don't feel good enough right. to be really, like, you know what? <laughs> I really should do something about this. I, You know, I yeah. should make a routine in my life to where I go to the gym or I take a half an hour and I breathe deep and I have meditation or I do yoga and stretch and whatever it is, drink that water, read a book, get good sleep, get off your device, let your brain slow down and reconnect with the natural world. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's so important. And um, I've been doing the rugged routines with my husband, even during trade show season this, this, this season. And, you know, we're making a point to get our workouts in and, and just really try to stay grounded and dedicated to ourselves and, yeah. and our goals. And um, this is another way that people can, can kind of latch into that and, and reconnect with their mind, body, and spirit. Yeah. I think that the common denominator I see between those, uh, the people who are doing 75 hard or any other similar, the wilderness athlete yeah. when, um, but also you and your husband, it's accountability, yes. right? So you have somebody to hold you accountable on those days where it's really difficult. Um, it's, it's nice to have somebody standing there saying, no, you said you were going to do this thing and yeah. I'm holding you accountable yeah. to that. And I know that a lot of people who've done 75 hard or any of those, they're posting on social media, their, yeah. their friends are holding them accountable and they want to achieve this goal mm-hmm. that they've set publicly. Yeah. And with, you know, you and your husband, it's like every day you're going to wake up and say, we are, we're doing this is this. what we're doing. It's going to be her. terrible, but we're going to do it. And oh. I just, I love that yeah. where people have, you know, that's good, solid mm-hmm. foundations in their life to hold them accountable. It's surrounding yourself with people that celebrate you not tolerate that's you. That's right. And, um, I, I think I, I'm just so thankful that I've got my best friend and, and my husband is, yeah. you know, he celebrates everything I do. And, um, it, it's, having that accountability, having a team of people that keep you accountable and, and keep your soul grounded, um, is so important, I think. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, especially for us when we have these longtime friends, Yes, not even just in our industry, but for me in our industry. So I've got you and I have a handful of girlfriends who, I mean, we empower each other, we lift each other up and we've been here for so long celebrating all of the successes and, and we've changed so much. I mean, I I tell Jen and Arissa from girls with guns all the time, those girls, (laughs) uh, my first shot show, I met them. I mean, like this is, you know, we've evolved into incredible women and, and now it's really neat seeing, you know, the girls in their twenties come into the quote unquote industry. And I hate saying that, but come into the business and, and they're now becoming the mentors. Yeah. You know, they're, they're becoming the mentors for young, even younger girls. And yeah. we have new role models coming in and, you know, hopefully us ladies are setting an example that this next generation where, where we leave off, they take over. Right. Yeah. I believe that credibility leads to longevity. Yeah. I've said it a million times and I believe it. We've seen some of these younger women or younger people in general coming in and the ones who um, have good intentions Mm -hmm. are here for the right reasons. You're going to see them year after year, just doing amazing things. I'm so proud of that. Mm -hmm. Um, It's the same as us, right? Good intentions. We, we definitely knew exactly what our intention was Mm -hmm. years ago when we were, you know, at the beginning (laughs) stages of our careers and we were doing it for the right reasons. We weren't here just for attention or whatever. We really had a purpose. And now I'm so proud of me and you and Jana and Bachman, like all of our friends yeah. who we've watched and encouraged over the years and lifted each other up and celebrated those moments. I just, I get so emotional during trade show season mm. when I get to see all of my longtime friends and we get to look back and say, well, look at what we're doing. I cried at sheep show. No <laughs> joke. Like three times. Um, I have some friends that couldn't be there for, for medical reasons. And, um, 
when I talked about this one person in particular who's been a servant to our veterans and I am even now I'm you know you want to through our family you know you get yeah. choked up you know and um you're so excited to see the other people in your life and um and I was talking to Rachel Attila we did a great podcast about um influencers and and using social media positively and we had this great conversation and I would love for you to kind of maybe take a a few seconds or minutes or whatever and give um some advice to other ladies like your your television you you are the CEO of a television production company that well I guess it's not even a a production a network excuse me a network you've you've ran a production company yeah what advice as a network executive can you give someone out there that's looking hey I want to I want to do what you guys are doing I I want a career what's a what's some great advice for them yeah so I believe it's all about intention I do and I you know I've said it if I've said it once I've said it a hundred times um there's an energy that people put off Mm -hmm. I'm a true believer in energy from humans and um people know immediately what your intentions are even if it's hidden in some way um, over the years, I can remember some of the young women who we see now in the yeah. industry who are who have solid jobs, actual great careers in this business. They're still hunting. They still have a social presence. They yeah. do all the things. But as soon as I met them, there's an energy and the intention was there. And it's a positive thing. And I wanted so yeah. badly for them to succeed. I wanted to be the person they've surrounded themselves with yeah. because I want to witness that success. And I think that you know, if you're coming into this industry or if you've been here for a while or any industry, it doesn't even need to be the outdoor community, any industry, um, have your heart in the right place. Right. And things, things kind of happen for you. If you have good intentions and you know exactly what your goals are and exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Um, but I will also say, um, some, women or females or, you know, people get a difficult time. Um, they get a lot of backlash from others about, you know, what they're wearing or how they post or whatever. Having makeup on when you're hunting, heaven forbid you do that. Right. Or, you know, some girl, maybe in my, maybe, you know, 15 years ago, I might've done a lot of, you know, bikinis and fishing and whatever. Honestly, if they get one person to enjoy the outdoors, they've done a great job. Yeah. I am a full supporter of people being who they are as long as their intentions are good. Yeah. You know, if they are literally out there saying, I really want to encourage some young people to buy a fishing license, I don't care how you do it. Yeah. I really don't. It does not matter to me what your personal decisions are. Go for it. Absolutely. But have good intentions and do it for the right reasons. And then we can, I will lift you up all day long. I truly believe that. And yeah. I think that um, if more people who are already established and we have this foundation of, you know, some form of success or we've been here for a minute and we totally understand what we're doing. If we can be supportive of a younger generation coming up in the right ways, support the ones with good intentions, support the ones who are doing the hard work, you know, no jealousy, no trash talking, no, you know, be supportive in a real empowering way. Mm -hmm. I think that's the true key to having um, a new generation come up and, take our job someday, yeah. take my job in 20 yeah. years. <laughs> it's going to be a minute, yeah. but like, take it's it. It's going to be a minute, but yeah, like, there will be you, a day. <laughs> someday someone's yeah. going to need to come up and step yeah. up and say, yeah, I'm ready. I've put in the work and I have, you know, my heart's in the right place and I've surrounded myself with good people. Mm-hmm. Come on up. We need good people. And I think that it begins with us supporting the right people. I love that. I think you're spot on with that advice. I think it's fantastic advice. What do you have new coming from Carbon TV that's different? And I know you have some other international yeah. news with Carbon TV we that do. maybe you want to share with our viewers. Yeah. So um, historically, Carbon TV has been um, OTT, like a video on demand yeah. um, network. Um, super proud. We have so much great female outdoor content. We have not just hunting content, but just so many different types of outdoor content. Um, so instead of just being video on demand, which means, um, for example, if you have Apple TV or, um, you know, Samsung, Roku, 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 you know, any of those, you can search for carbon TV. You can choose anything from our entire library that you want to watch for free all the time for free. Um, now we've moved into fast channel distribution, connected TV distribution, which means that 
um, depending on which platforms we begin distributing on, anybody with any device, any TV, can stream Carbon TV for free. Oh, um, fantastic. Yeah. So we just launched um, in Asia and Europe and Great Britain and Canada. And that means, I mean, you can watch us still in all of, you can watch us literally anywhere in the world if you have an internet connection. Um, but this is but actually this derived is, through the television. It's through now. the television and it's a programming schedule. So it's not video on demand, but it's us saying, here are our amazing pieces of content that we think you're going to love. And we schedule it out so they can binge watch Pursue the Wild. Mm -hmm. They can binge watch, you know, any of the great shows that we have on Carbon TV. And we can selectively program every day what we think people will want to watch. So they have the option now of... You know, connect the TV, watching it anywhere in the world mm -hmm. as much as they want for free or the video on demand app. So it's really pushed us into this massive new distribution. Oh, it's huge. Oh, yeah. It's it's really amazing. And it's yeah. fun for me to see all of that kind of come full circle mm -hmm. because my goal is for everyone in the world to have access to our amazing content. Yeah. And now here we are. And here we are. We're going. Yeah. We're around the world now. So not we're only global. is she supporting us in the U.S. with our, with our hunting traditions and cultures, we're now the network is taking this as a global agenda which I think is so right. necessary because um, hunting is something that especially I mean in a lot of countries women don't have the rights that we have right um, and, yeah and don't have the freedoms to do the things we have so hopefully we have that opportunity to plant that seed of desire and a dream and someone that maybe never even thought it was possible absolutely and you know it's like you know, putting that into households where they might not have known it was an option. Yeah. Right. So introducing people to our lifestyle through storytelling. Yes. Um, where they can have their eyes open to a new way mm -hmm. of, of life or education or conservation, you know, mm -hmm. all of the different things that they can learn and um, absorb through the content. Um, just kind of putting it out there in all of the different ways that I can find. That's, yes. that's fun. So where can people watch Carbon TV? Uh, you can watch Carbon TV. Well, anybody who has a phone or a tablet or any smart device, we're free on iOS and Android. We okay. just, I, we just updated our iOS app, which looks amazing. Um, so literally anyone with any device can download it for free and it's, we never charge. That's the thing. You'll never be charged anything. And we have... 250 plus shows that air on the network right now and a lot more coming over. Um, but then if you have, um, for example, uh, Roku, Amazon Fire, Apple TV, Samsung, I think LG TV launches this week. Um, you know, for video on demand, you just go and you start typing in Carbon TV. It downloads it for free onto your device on your TV. And it just is always right there. So That's you can just perfect. click on the Carbon TV little icon and then it streams its video on demand, anything you want to watch all the time. And you guys are, Carbon TV is also on social media. So yes. if people want to watch uh, or follow yeah. what, what updates and exciting things you have going on with your network, it's on Facebook and Instagram. Yep. We're on Facebook and Instagram. I think it's Carbon TV Media is the, the name of it. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're, we're very active on there. We have so many great producer partners and we try to support them and share all of the cool stuff they're doing too. So, um, I'm not on social media as much as I used to be, but yeah. you know, I try to go on and support and, and kind of, you know, watch what's going on. But yeah, carbon TV is very active on, on all of them. And there's always something fun happening at this company. It's, it's amazing. Well, it's because you're always working so hard and yeah. we appreciate that. And my whole team too. I have the I have the most yeah. brilliant team of people around me and that's that's where it is. I just, you know, I would be nothing yeah. without them. I hey, I have a great team too. Yeah. I am so thankful for my team and I can t definitely appreciate that. Normally my husband's filming these podcasts for me and I've had to adult and do them myself today so I'm like I'm so proud of you. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> so if there's like a video mistake or an audio mistake, well, the audio, not so much, but the video side. Sorry, you guys. Right. My husband, Adjur, is not here. <laughs> um, but so what about following you on social media? Are you available like publicly on social media? Yeah, I'm on social. So Jules McQueen is okay. typically, you know, what I go by. Um, I'm on Instagram now and then. I've yeah. made some promises to my team. I'll be on there a little more this year. Yeah. Um, I took a, a little vacation, you know, like most of us do once in a while, but mine was for like two years. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> so yeah, but I'm on Take all the time I, you need. Yeah, I'm 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 on social media, Jules McQueen. Um yeah, I, I try to I try to pop on there once in a while and you know, do a few things. And you yeah. also still have a TV show 
on Carbon do. TV, Outdoor Weekly. Yeah, so I do Outdoor Weekly. So tell everybody how they can watch that and the premise of, of that as well. Yeah, Outdoor Weekly is fun. It's So I actually was contracted to host that show before I started working at the company. I, like I had no, I had nothing to do with the business. And they did, they actually, um, I forget one year, I think at SHOT Show, they did a screen test um, for who was going to host this show that they had a concept for. And it was supposed to be the first outdoor news program. Yeah. And um, I got the job hosting Outdoor Weekly. And at the time, um, it was kind of like more of just a cool idea. We yeah. didn't know what we were doing. The first season was really fun. It was all like outdoors. And now I actually have a green room with a news desk. I drink whiskey on it's my show. It's a little show. fancier than I my have. green room. <laughs> I actually painted it myself, oh, you know, but awesome. it's like, it's like a fun news program. And we, um, we script in any, uh, updates in legislation, nice. anybody who like world records, you know, fishing, hunting, um, any States that are updating, you know, game, hunt, game yeah, and fish laws yeah, yeah, game and fish laws. We do kind of like happy news, you know, kind of places I want to see in the world. My favorite segment on everyone, just like. I've always wanted to have a travel show. Yeah. And now, oh, you, and you know what? I just worked it right in there. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I think we're going to do a travel segment on every yeah. single one of them where I want to see these places in the world. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Outdoor Weekly is really fun. It's streaming on Carbon TV all the time. I'm starting um, this season. Um, Chevy is our is our sponsor this, she's, this season. So I think it starts in March. So it'll be good. Yeah, I, mean, I love I love that show. I get to have yeah. fun. Yeah, and just it's your sit it's your it's a desk. passion project. Yeah, it's fun. Well, Julie, I want to thank you so much for taking your time at a shot show pre shot show. Technically, this is our day off. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're this is our day off. This is this, yeah, is, this, this is the calm before chaos of shot show. And yeah. normally we're at Jana Waller's cocktail party right That's now, right? But she's not here, so we're podcasting instead. <laughs> so um, anyway, I appreciate you taking the time to come down here and talk, and uh, you know just share your story and your message with um, our listeners and viewers because this will also be on Carbon TV so they're shared with us and I'm really thankful and um, honored to be part of that family and hopefully all of you follow Julie on her social media but also more importantly get on Carbon TV use the power of your convictions and watch where you believe. So. Well, I love having you in the Carbon TV family. As one of my most long-standing friends in this lifetime, you Thanks. know, it is such an honor. Yeah. You were already killing it and successful before yeah. we made this deal happen, but it is even better for me now knowing yeah. that you're... In you the are family. In the fam. I'm in the family. And I, I love you and I'm I'm excited oh, I love to, you too. to you're making me teary. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this episode of the Wild Nine and Cut Podcast coming at you from my hotel room at Shot Show. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you all soon. Dead Downwind Laundry Soap goes far beyond just being unscented. Their liquid laundry soap is my go-to for cleaning up blood and dirt stains especially on items that don't easily fit into the washing machine. The liquid soap works great in your utility sink. Just pour and soak your gear or scrub and spray it off in your driveway. Remove stains, clean and deodorize all in one when you unleash the power of the industry's most effective scent killing enzymes. Dead Down Wind Laundry Soap, check it out. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.